Uh, hey, Mark. Uh, uh, one time, this, like, I was, like, uh, totally Timmy Turner. <laughs> uh, yeah, totally. It's totally Kyle! Out of all the Nicktoons that exist out there, I'd have to say my favourite is and always will be The Fairly Odd Parent. This really kickstarted Butch Hartman's career, with them continuing to make three other shows for Nick, albeit with differing degrees of success. And despite it being a meme, the guy kinda did have a hand in creating my childhood. I loved this show growing up. If it weren't for Fairly Odd Parents, it's likely I wouldn't be where I am today. It's the show that got me into drawing, which led me into wanting to be an animator, which led me to YouTube, which led me to depression. Now of course this is the obligatory part of the video where I said that the Fairly Odd Parents went into seasonal rot, and added character after character in desperate attempts for relevancy. First would be Poof. Then after they realised a baby had no story potential, they added Pooch, I mean Sparky. Then when they realised Sparky was annoying as all hell, they added Chloe. Then the show was cancelled before they had the chance to ruin it any further. Butch likes to excuse the decisions nowadays by saying, Come on guys, we needed to add more characters since the show was on for so long. It needed something fresh. I get one or, one or two comments to be like, well the new episodes stink, they're so bad. Why did you add Sparky or why did you add Poof? Why? It's like, listen, we had to do something. We had to add new characters to keep the show fresh. Which I would believe if it weren't for the fact that their neighbor Spongebob is still airing new episodes with the same cast it had back in 1999. And I doubt people would have minded the new characters if they were, you know, good. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Instead, I'd like to focus on another one of the series' attempts to seem relevant and bring in more viewers. That despite a few reviews here and there, I don't really see many people talk about. That of course being the live-action Fairly Odd Parents trilogy of movies. And considering I usually like to talk about movies in bunches, I think it's fitting to talk about them all in one video. To see if they managed to capture what made the early seasons of the show so special, or if it's just as awful as the later episodes. The idea of a live-action Fairly Odd Parents movie is really bizarre. To me, the series really could only work as a cartoon, since the concept of wishing for anything could push the limits of reality as much as the writers wanted to. So why even make these to begin with? I don't know. Come on, you can't expect me to have all the answers here. I can only assume Butch was sitting on his pile of money one day like, Hmm, Drake Bell is kinda hot. What if? And now we're here. I mean, how did you think it went? That's the only reason I could see them getting such an unfitting actor to play Timmy. Let's just get into the first one. A fairly odd movie, Grow Up Timmy Turner. I wish I was Drake Bell! Uh, okay, you're the boss! Hello, handsome! No way! Timmy Turner is now a 23-year-old man, but to keep his fairies he has refused to grow up in any way. He still lives at home, goes to school in the same class, and has never fallen in love with a girl. You know, except for when he did. That's actually not a bad idea for a movie, it has a lot of potential, if it were thought through for even a second. But this movie is listed as a romantic comedy for some reason, and that's where Tootie comes in. Tootie in the original series was a young, whiny little girl who desperately wanted Timmy to fall in love with her, and obviously he avoided it at all costs. But now she's a hot environmentalist who cares about animals a lot, and that of course means Timmy falls in love with her at first sight. How shallow. So now Cosmo and Wanda have to try their best to keep Timmy from falling in love, or else they'll have to leave him forever. This is until Timmy's teacher Crocker teams up with an evil businessman, looking to build an oil factory in Dimsdale, so they kidnap the fairies and Tootie, so Timmy has to rescue them. Honestly, with a couple tweaks like removing the whole falling in love plot device, I think this story could have worked really well, but if it were me I would have gone in an entirely different direction. See, when Timmy starts to fall in love, it's followed by Cosmo and Wanda desperately trying to stop him, and to me it should have been the opposite. To me the only way this could work is if Timmy was completely set in his way about not being willing to give up Cosmo and Wanda, with even them wanting to move on. In a loving way of course, like a mum and dad looking for their child to move out of the house. And the movie would follow Timmy's journey in growing up, and leaving behind his childhood furries. But in this movie his growth is symbolised through getting a pink fedora? Wait, is that you Butch? You sly dog. It would also do a good job at making Cosmo and Wanda the slightest bit likeable. A problem with pretty much all of Butch Hartman's characters is that they're usually all simple stereotypes with no depth. But the more that the Fairly Odd Parents went on, the more these characters were flounderized, and eventually became stereotypes of the stereotypes. So instead of being a pair of hopeless romantics who occasionally get in a kerfuffle, the kerfuffle. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. I was sorry, and I would say I'm proud to be your wife, Wanda. In later seasons they became a pair of one-note obnoxious idiots, who came across like they couldn't even stand being around each other, and this movie has them at their worst. I don't think there's a single part in this film where they acknowledge that they're married, or even that they somewhat like each other. 
In fact, there's way more examples of the opposite. For once, I agree with your shrill, commanding, and authoritative voice. I mean, I love you. But how do the other characters fare? Well, first we've got Drake Bell as Timmy Turner. Yep, that is definitely how I pictured this kid to look when he was older. To be fair, he does an alright job at acting, with everything that isn't a furry at least. They had stand-ins for where the furries would be, but for the life of him he can't keep his eyes on them. Tootie is possibly one of the worst Miri Sues I've ever seen. She's portrayed as being perfect in every way, yet still falls in love with Timmy Turner, despite him acting like a literal child and his only friends being children. Yes! I would say it's fine as a plot device, but she's the central focus of the movie and takes up most of the screen time. There's also this really weird part where they're about to kiss when they hear a noise and turn around, causing Timmy to accidentally fall out of the tree. Then she starts freaking out like, oh my god, you did that not to kiss me despite us both turning to see the noise. Jesus Christ, why is he obligated to kiss you? This would be considered really creepy if it were the other way around. Grow up, Timmy Turner! Ah, ah, he said it! He said it! The business guy is boring and should have been Doug Dimmodome. Moving on. There's also a fair amount of side characters who get the live action treatment, like Edge, Ed, Chester, Vicky, etc. But they add so little to the story that the first version I found cut all their scenes out and I didn't even realise until the end because it works just as well without them. Or I guess just as pearly without them. The only character that I would say is flat out great is Crocker. He perfectly captures the animated character, to the point where I thought he was played by the real voice actor, just like they did for Timmy's dad. But he isn't, he's just that good at it. The only bad thing I can say about him isn't even his fault, it's more of the direction. See, there's certain things you have to take into account when turning an animated show into live action, and it's how far you should go in keeping it close to the original. And surprisingly, this movie's issue for me is that it tries to be too faithful to the cartoon. I don't know if you've ever recognised this, but after I say it you will not be able to unhear it. When you're watching a show created by Butch Hartman, it is painfully obvious it was created by Butch Hartman. And that is not shown more than through the music. Everything Butch does, Guy Moon is there to accompany him. Every time a character touches something, sound effect. Every time a character does any kind of action, sound effect. Any time a character even speaks, you better believe there's a sound effect. And that just doesn't translate well to a real life setting. You know what else doesn't? Trying to make every cartoon set as accurate as possible in real life. Is it kinda cool to see? Sure. But it makes every location look like Springfield at Universal Studios, which really takes you out of the experience. And I can't help but wonder why this wasn't just another movie done in the usual 2D style like they've done before. Other than for marketability, of course. And I thought we all figured it out and agreed by the time the Timmy Jimmy Power Hours came out, but Butch's designs do not look appealing in 3D at all. In the Fairly Odd Parents, characters' mouths will extend up near their eyes, and it just doesn't work with CGI, it looks so uncanny and they can't express at all. So to end this off, Timmy rescues Tootie and his fairies from the businessman, that I still can't be bothered to learn the name of. By professing his love for Tootie, so now Timmy loses his fairies, but finally learns to grow up in the process, bringing the series to a bittersweet conclusion. Is what I would be saying if this were written by someone competent. Who wrote this again? That, okay, that explains it. Obviously, Butch Hartman wrote this. Instead of that, they find out about the Timmy Turner rule that states, I can't believe this is real. It states that any person that has used their furries in the past to save the world on multiple occasions, and just so happens to be called Timmy Turner, gets to keep their furries forever, as long as they choose to use the powers for good. What? I'm going to try to contain myself for a bit and try to explain this as calmly as possible. A running theme of the original series that I never really appreciated was that eventually when he got old enough, Timmy would lose his furries and forget even having them. And the show did explore at times how Timmy tried to manipulate the system, to try to keep them forever before finally coming to terms with the fact that he was going to need to give them up at one point, and that Cosmo and Wanda had kids before him, and will continue to have kids after him. It's something you see as a kid and go, what, that's so unfair, why can't Timmy be with Cosmo and Wanda forever? But just like Timmy, the older I got, the more I realised that losing his godparents was something that needed to happen, and it gives their relationship a stronger bond, you know? It makes the time they spend together more important. But screw that, am I right? Who wants any kind of emotional stakes in a show? So yeah, not a great film. It's full of dumb, cringy writing, bad, unlikable characters, and its faithfulness to the show ends up hindering its potential. But I dislike it more in the fact that it ruins one of the best parts of the original series, and removes it for a lame gimmicky ending, only there to set up other movies. You know where this is going. 
Somehow the first Fairly Odd Movie was a huge hit, being seen by almost 6 million people when it initially premiered. So Butch and his team got back together to create a sequel. But not just any sequel. A Christmas movie. This one sees Timmy and gang being brought to the North Pole, where it's revealed to them that all their selfless wishing is leading to less and less people wanting gifts from Santa. And after a mishap that gives him amnesia, Timmy Turner is now tasked with being the new Santa Claus. Yes, this is just the Tim Allen movie. So the plot is basically an adventure where Timmy, Tootie, Cosmo, Wanda, Crocker and two elves have to travel across the North Pole to get Timmy off the naughty list. And I mean, I can't really be too mad at this plot. It's so separated from the core themes of this show and is more of a standalone adventure that I can't really be mad at it like I could the first. Now of course that doesn't mean I can't be mad at other aspects. Life is pain. The first Fairly Odd movie already looked very cheap, but with this one it seemed the budget was sliced in half. This literally just looks like a Santa suit bought from the store. I'm guessing most of the budget was spent sending the crew up to a snowy mountain. It's at least commendable this wasn't all done on green screens. The characters basically all act the same in the worst way possible. Like Amiri Sue might be able to work as a plot device in the first, but after that she just has nothing interesting to add. Again, the only one here that really works is Crocker. This man cares way too much about giving a great performance. Oh, time to use my patented Crocker blend in technique. Yoink! <laughs> I can imagine the only reason his character was brought into this one is because the writers knew how great his actor was, and he continues to be the highlight. This is going to seem really minor and I guarantee nobody cares about this except me, but something I love to see in cartoons is how many different outfits a character can have that still follows the same colour scheme, and it really bothers me how selective they are about it in these movies. Timmy's hat? Pink as usual. Timmy's fedora? Also pink. It's good. His snow jacket? Red? Give him a pink Santa hat, that's all I want. Just look at the Scooby-Doo movies. They are constantly wearing the same colour schemes and it's hilarious. As you can see, I barely have anything to say about this one. It's just kind of... okay. Every time I get bored and feel like tearing my eyes out, there's that little bit of hope from Crocker that keeps me interested. And for that, I at least say it's better than the first one. That's gotta be something. It also helps that it's got a very basic structure of the gang going to different set pieces with them eventually finding the elf that makes the naughty list, where he is taken off and is able to go around the world and deliver presents to the kids of the world. Oh, head, don't just drop them off like that. You're supposed to, like, throw them down into the chimney. They're going to hit someone. Okay, whatever. After that, Timmy is congratulated for saving Christmas, and the furries and elves resolve their differences. Oh, shit, that's right. I forgot to mention the elves. They add nothing. I'm sorry if this is a little anticlimactic, there's honestly nothing I can say about this one, it's just a fine children's movie and that's it. Okay, surely that's all. Timmy turned his first jump to live action, I can see why that would do well. I doubt anyone cared about Drake Bell trying to save Christmas though. Nearly 5 million viewers? Was there really nothing else to watch that day? You know what, I can't exactly point fingers, I was one of those 5 million. And this brings us to the true epic conclusion in the Fairly Odd movie trilogy, Fairly Odd Summer. Like the yin and yang, this movie instead of taking place in a freezing cold setting, has our characters visit an extremely warm setting. And by characters, I mean all the characters, like every single person in Timmy's life suddenly wants to go to Hawaii. His mum and dad are going, as they have been given a check to set up a party for his job. Tootie has to deliver some science thing to a science guy. Jorgen is going because why not, and because he's still the best character, Crocker is also headed to Hawaii, where he crosses paths with Foop. Now Foop is a character that was added after Poof came into the picture. All the furries have an anti-furry equivalent that acts as the opposite of them, and of course that means the opposite of Poof is an actually interesting character. So despite them becoming friends and saving each other's lives in the first movie, Crocker now wants to kill Timmy again, and I can't really blame him. Look at Timmy, he's just constantly boasting about his fairies everywhere in public, right there in the open. Remember how fun it was to see Cosmo and Wanda try to hide in creative ways in public? 3D models sure are expensive. And speaking of these models, it looks like their halved budget was cut even further because there's just no effort anymore to make them blend in with the real world. They end up just blurring the background to all hell most of the time to hide this fact. This is also the first time we get to see fairy world in live action. This is gonna be so cool. What's the point if you're just going to use 2D illustrations? Anyway, I got off track. Foop and Crocker plan on stealing the power source that the furries use for their magic, and because Timmy is currently taking care of it, they have to steal it from him. By... impersonating Mumpkey Jones, that is like literally the exact same mask. This is also where the gang meets some brand new characters. 
boy and girl. They have rich parents and their babysitter Vicky was tasked with taking them to Hawaii because of course she was. And from this Timmy and Tootie helped them to get away from her. That's all I have to say about them. I know I'm saying this for like half the characters, but they have nothing to do. I don't know why they're even added. So eventually, Foop and Crocker make their way to a volcano after being stuck on the same beach set for the past 30 minutes of the movie, where Timmy arrives to stop them, and also save Tootie and the kids, because they were like, stuck there I guess. And also Crocker and I because obvious dumb betrayal is obvious. Timmy grabs the power source and is ready to fight Foop in an epic action-packed finale. Oh my god, oh my what the hell? Did that really kill Timmy? I gotta give props to you Butch, that's a bold move. Uh... Oh no, 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 no Butch. It means I'm just like you guys. This is awesome! Please understand that I have a very strong connection to this show when I say this but Come on, really? To me, the great thing about the Fairly Odd Parents was despite the magical setup, it had a very realistic heart. It was a great representation for how the people from your childhood aren't going to be in your life forever. The bad people, and the good. And I don't think even Butch realised this. Because if he did, turning Timmy into a furry as the finale to the Fairly Odd Parents canon so we can always see Cosmo and Wanda is one of the worst ways to conclude the series. The only reason I got you guys in the first place is because I had a mean babysitter. I know I'll lose you when I'm older. So I'm not taking any chances until then. If that means a few more years of putting up with Vicky, then it's totally worth it. And honestly doesn't even make sense. Why does Timmy become Tootie's fairy godparent? She's a grown woman with a great life. And this isn't even the last time they do that. Again, I know I didn't talk about this one much, but like the Christmas movie, there's nothing to say. It is the worst of the trilogy, but it's just a really boring and generic kids film. And the only reason I remember it is because of the awful ending. So despite the title, Timmy never really grew up. He gotta stay a kid forever. The worst thing about this is that it makes one of the best episodes of the series, and in my mind the perfect conclusion to the show, entirely retconned. Or does it? I really need to know if this is canon or not to put my mind at ease. Thankfully one of my patrons reached out to Butch. Link in description. But he sadly didn't respond, that heartless son of a Butch. If only there were some other way to find out. It's me, Timmy Turner, and I just want to say, all the Fairly Odd Parents movies starring Drake Bell are canon, and I love them all! Oh, thanks anyway, Timmy. I'm sorry about what Butch did to your show. Also, subscribe to LS Mark. Thank you! Thanks, Timmy. I appreciate it. But I'm gonna need to hear this from a more official source. If only there was some way I could ask Butch myself. But he's such a huge star, how could I even contact him? Uh, I loved working on the Fairly Odd Parents live action movies. It was so much fun to turn, you know, uh, Timmy Turner into a live person. And then it was my idea to make the fairies into CGI characters. And we couldn't really afford to do them for the whole movie, which is why they turned into people halfway through the movie. <laughs> so um, here are the question, is it canon? Uh, are these stories canon? I would equate it to this. You know how there's the Spider-Man comic books? There's like 47,000 titles for Spider-Man. And then there's all the Spider-Man movies. And... I think the Spider I think the Fairly Odd Parents movies are kind of like canon the way those Spider-Man movies are canon. They take pieces of the comic books, you know, uh, and make them into elements for the movie. Same with the Fairly Odd movies. We took pieces of the show and made them into 90-minute narratives that hopefully entertained people. Are they canon completely? It's kind of weird. I don't really know what to say about that cuz Timmy's all grown up. Gosh, I wish I had a more intelligent answer for that. I'm just being straight up with you. I wish I wish I could tell you. Oh, well that was easy. And I think I drew a commission for you.